Welcome, welcome. My name's Marty Braden. I mention my name at the beginning of every video I do because I never know if you're someone who's never watched one of my videos or that you're a subscriber. So please forgive me for doing that. I know you know me if you're a subscriber. Just know that either way, I'm happy you're checking to see what this video is all about. This particular video, as are all my other videos, is one of the whole series of short videos I'm doing in review of my introduction that's at the very beginning of my book, An Atheist Delusion. This video is part 16. In my last video, I talked about mankind's amoebahood, <laughs> which of course came from the mind of Charles Darwin and his false theory of revolution. Darwin postulated that at some unknown time in some unknown way, life commenced in some unproven, untested, spontaneous way within a speck of protoplasm. In other words, mankind's genesis, our parenthood, was amoebahood. <laughs> good, good in the morning. Anyhow, I concluded part 15 by saying that Satan is behind this false and pernicious quasi-religious doctrine where he has and will continue to take all the power, wealth, and the enmity that exists throughout the world and is using it to destroy God's work and implode God's plan of happiness that he has provided for us, his children, both while we're living here on earth and that we'll experience in the world to come. Satan is the God of pleasure. And as the God of pleasure, Satan continually tempts mankind to worship him by influencing them to seek the pleasures of the world. This is his objective even today. He's leading mankind astray and away from a belief in the true and living God. He calls us away from our eternal parents who reside in the cerebral heavens. Satan, also called the adversary of the devil, is the enemy of all righteousness and of all those who seek to follow God. Satan, a fallen spirit son of our Heavenly Father, was once an angel of light, even one who is in authority in the presence of God. He was called a son of the morning. In Doctrine and Covenants section 76, verse 25, we read, And this we saw also, and bear record, that an angel of God, who was in authority in the presence of God, who rebelled against the only begotten Son, whom the Father loved, and who was in the bosom of the Father, was thrust down from the presence of God and the Son, even a son of the morning. In section 76, 26 and 27, it continues, And was called perdition, for the heavens wept over him, he was Lucifer, a son of the morning, and we beheld him lo, he is fallen, he is fallen, even a son of the morning. In Isaiah, in the Old Testament, chapter 14, verse 12, we read, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut, thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? In the premortal grand council in heaven, Lucifer, as Satan was then called, ultimately rebelled against God our Heavenly Father. And when he did, war in heaven ensued. As a result of the war, a war of words, principles, ideologies, Satan and his followers were cast out of God's presence and were sent to earth in their spirit personage state. And it is these spirits who are continually tempting each of us and are working extremely hard to destroy each of us. They are the third part of the spirit children of God who once dwelled with God but were cast out and thrust down to this earth because of rebellion. You can imagine the billions have been on the earth. You take a third of it or a third part of it, it could be very well be billions are all there, three to four to five to ten to a hundred against one of us trying to take us down. Anyway, since that time, Satan has sought to destroy the children of God who have come to earth to get a body and experience mortality. It is Satan's desire to make all of mankind most miserable like he and all his fallen minions are. They will never receive bodies, and so they are furious with God and his children, who have and will yet obtain mortal bodies. One primary principle fought, fought about in this veritable conflict between God and Satan in our pre-mortal estate was the principle of agency. Agency is a, pre a precious gift given to us by God himself. It's an essential law in his plan. Satan's rebellion against God and his law, especially his fight with Jehovah, was about destroying the agency of man, even the law of choice. In the book of Moses, chapter 4, verses 1 through 32, it says, And I, the Lord God, spake unto Moses, saying, That Satan, whom thou hast commanded in the name of mine only begotten, is the same which was from the beginning, and he came before me, saying, Behold, here am I, send me, I will be thy son. 
the Savior, and I will redeem all mankind, all mankind, that not one soul shall be lost, and surely I will do it. Wherefore, give me thine honor. But behold, my beloved son, which was my beloved and chosen from the beginning, said unto me, Father, thy will be done, and the glory be thine forever. Wherefore, because that Satan rebelled against me and sought to destroy the agency of man, which I, the Lord God, had given him, and also that I should give unto him mine own power, by the power of mine only begotten, I caused that he should be cast down. And he came, um, excuse me, and he became Satan, yea, even the devil, the father of lies, to deceive and to blind men and to lead them captive at his will, even as many as would not hearken unto my voice. And now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which I, the Lord God, had made. And Satan put into, into the heart of the serpent, for he had drawn away many after him. And he sought also to beguile Eve, for he knew not the mind of God. Wherefore, he sought to destroy the world. Verse 7, continuing. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. A lie. That's true that he said that, but here's the lie. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which thou beholdest in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent lied by saying unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die, for God doth know that in the day that ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Satan was challenging the word of God. He was putting his own beliefs into the thoughts of this woman, this first woman called Eve. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it became pleasant, pleasant to the eyes and a tree to be desired to make her wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat and also gave unto her husband with her and he did eat. Man's word replaced God's word now. And the eyes of them both were opened, and they knew that they had been naked. And they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. And they heard the voice of the Lord God as they were walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife went to hide themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. And I, the Lord God, called unto Adam and said unto him, Where goest thou? Adam, Adam. Where goest thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid, because I beheld that I was naked, and I hid myself. And I, the Lord God, said to Adam, Who told thee that thou wast naked? Hast thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldst not eat? If so, thou shouldst surely die. And the man said, The woman thou gavest me, and commandest that she should remain with me, she gave me of the fruit of the tree, and I did eat. And I, the Lord God, said unto the woman, what is this thing which thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. And verse 20, And I, the Lord God, said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou shalt be cursed above all cattle, and above all every beast of the field. Upon thy belly shalt thou go, and thou shalt eat all the days of thy life. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, between thy seed, his followers, all the believers in Satan, and evil and corruption, and her, which and her seed, which is who is Jesus, and he said, Shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Unto the woman, I, the Lord God, said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception in sorrow. Thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. And unto Adam, I, the Lord God, said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the fruit of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed shall be the ground for thy sake, for thy sake, in sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Thorns, first time thorns entered the picture, thorns also, and thistles shall be, be, uh, it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herb, herb of the field. By the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread, until thou shalt return unto the ground, for thou shalt surely die. You forgot that, Adam. Thou shalt surely die, for out of it wast thou taken from for dust thou wast, and unto dust shalt thou return. And Adam called his wife's name Eve, because she was the mother of all living. For thus have I, the Lord God, called the first of all women, which are many. Unto Adam, and also unto his wife, did I, the Lord God, make coats of skin, and clothe them. And I, the Lord God, said unto mine only begotten, Behold, the man is become as one of us, to know good and evil. And now lest he put forth his hand, and partake of the fruit of the tree of life, and eat and live forever. 
Therefore I, the Lord God, will send him forth from the garden of Eden to till the ground from hence, whence he was taken. For as I, the Lord God, liveth, even so my words cannot return, return void. For as they go forth out of my mouth, they must be fulfilled. So I drove out the man, and I placed at the east of the garden of Eden cherubim and a flaming sword, which turned every way to keep the way of the tree of life. And these are the words which I spake unto my servant Moses, and they are the tr um, are true, even as I will. And I spake, have I spoken them unto you. See thou show them unto no man. Is that me going to see? See them, thou show them unto no man until I command you, except to them that believe. Amen. Satan said, I will redeem all mankind, that one soul shall not be lost, and surely I will do it, wherefore give me thine honor. Satan was able to persuade a third part of the host of heaven to support him in his goal to become the Savior and ultimately God himself. And because God chose Jehovah, Satan and his followers rebelled against Jehovah and Heavenly Father's plan of happiness. In the Dark Covenant section 29, verse 36, it says, And it came to pass that Adam, being tempted of the devil, for behold, the devil was before Adam, for he rebelled against me, saying, Give me thine honor, which is my power. And also a third part of the hosts of heaven turned he away from me because of their agency. In Revelations 12, 7 through 8, it says, And there was war in heaven. That's what ensued. Michael, whose name was Adam, while on the earth, and his angels, you and I, fought against the dragon, Lucifer, Satan, and the dragon fought with his angels, those spirit children who were later cast out with Satan to the earth, who wanted his ideology, wanted him to be the Savior, wanted his plan of easy peasy, and prevailed not, neither was their place found any more in heaven. As a result of this rebellion, Satan and his followers were cut off from God's presence, were cast down to the earth, and were denied the blessing of receiving a physical body, as well as his experience of having a mortal experience here on earth, with all of its opportunities and blessings, and ultimately, after our time on earth, receiving the gift of resurrection. This conflict between forced salvation and moral agency continues even to this very day here on the earth. It is a war of opposing ideologies, Theism versus secular humanism or atheism. Revelation 12.9 says, And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil, and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world, he was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Heavenly Father allows Satan and his followers, the spirit children cast out of his presence for rebellion, Satan's angels, his followers, he allows them to tempt us as part of our experience here in mortality. The following verses of scripture were written by the prophet Lehi about him teaching his son Jacob about the fall. 2 Nephi 2 verses 11 through 14. For it must needs be that there is an opposition in all things. If not so, my firstborn in the wilderness, righteousness could not be brought to pass. Neither wickedness, neither holiness, nor misery, neither good nor bad. Wherefore, all things must needs be a compound in one. Those, uh, goodness, those contraries, a compound in one. Wherefore it should be one body, it must needs remain as dead, having no life, neither death, nor corruption, nor incorruption, happiness, nor misery, neither sense, nor insensibility. Wherefore it must needs have been created for a thing of naught. Wherefore there would have been no purpose in the end of its creation. Wherefore this thing must needs destroy the wisdom of God and his eternal purposes, and also the power and the mercy and the justice of God. And if ye shall say there is no law, ye shall also say there is no sin. If ye shall say there is no sin, ye shall also say there is no righteousness. And if there be no righteousness, there be no happiness. And if there is be no righteousness nor happiness, there be no punishment nor misery. And if these things are not, there is no God. And if there is no God, we are not, neither the earth. For there could have been no creation of things, neither to act nor to be acted upon. Wherefore, all things must have vanished away. And now, my son, I speak unto you these things for your profit and learning. For there is a God, and he hath created all things, both the heavens and the earth, and all things that in them are, both things to act and things to be acted upon. Doctrine and Covenants 29.39 says, And it must needs be that the devil should tempt the children of men, or they could not be agents unto themselves. For if they were not, never should have bitter, known the bitter, they could not have known the sweet. Because Satan seeketh that all men might be miserable like unto himself. Again in 2 Nephi 2 verse 27 says, Wherefore, men are free according to the flesh, the agency of man, and all things are given them which are expedient unto men. And they are free to choose. 
liberty and eternal life through the great mediator of all men or to choose captivity and death according to the captivity and power of the devil for he seeketh that all men might be me miserable like unto himself and finishing this off satan and his minions fallen spirit angels even the third part of god's spirit children try to lead us away from choosing righteousness heavenly father our creator does not force us to accept his authority or his love our willingness to submit to his authority sustaining god as sovereign is the first step in conversion to the gospel of jesus christ and coming to know that there is a god who lives how do we listen to this question how do we do that you say how do we know that god lives we lay aside any feeling of pride that's so common in people's hearts today by this i mean the attitude and mindset that rejects the authority of god to rule in one's life which is exactly what Lucifer or Satan did and still does today. He rejected God's authority because he wanted it for himself. The Lord himself made the prophet Joseph Smith aware of this attitude of rebellion by describing it to him when he said to Joseph in that first vision, They seek not the Lord to establish his righteousness, but every man walketh in his own way and after the image of his or her own God. I'm going to leave it there. The next video is going to be incredible because I'm going to break down how this attitude, when you put it in the right place, opens the door to the knowledge that God exists and how we can come to know that of a surety. It's going to be fun. But until then, write your comments, write any comments, questions, or thoughts. I'd love to look at them. Thanks so much. Until then, I wish you continued success. Goodbye.